good morning everyone so today we will discuss about the rest part of the respiration before going to the concept let us recap the previous questions which part separates both the nasal cavities the answer septum which part separates nasal cavity from oral cavity the answer is palate what is inhalation taking air into the body is called inhalation what is exhalation leaving air is called as exhalation which part play vital role in inhalation and exhalation mainly diaphragm and the chest wall play very important role during inhalation and exhalation okay so in the today class we are going to discuss about lungs gaseous exchange and cellular respiration so let us see the first topic about the lungs okay so when you talk about lungs the first point about the lungs is where the lungs are located so lungs are located in chest cavity the location of the lungs is chest cavity do you know how many lungs we have so we have two lungs are both the lungs are in same size no actually we have two lungs right lung left lung but both are not in the same size left lung is slightly smaller whereas right lung slightly bigger the reason is the left lung is slightly smaller because it gives some space for the accommodation of heart because our heart is located slightly towards left side because of that reason our left lung is slightly smaller than the right lung and another reason right lung have three lobes whereas left lung have two lobes so because of that both are not in the same size now how the lungs are protected so lungs are surrounded by two membranes called as pleura pleura is a very important bit okay in between the two pleura there is a fluid called as pleural fluid so pleura and pleural fluid are very very useful to protect the lungs from the mechanical shocks now coming to how it is made up of it is made up of purely sponge tissue it is very spongy in the nature it's very spongy in the nature so now let us discuss about when you see the lungs inside each lung is filled with millions of alveoli alveoli means air sacs each lung is filled with millions of alveoli and very important fact here if you open all alveoli and spread on the surface it occupies around 160 meter square distance it's equal to one tennis court so just you can imagine how many millions of alveoli present inside the lungs okay so this is about few important facts about our lungs so now we move on to the next concept gaseous exchange so now we'll discuss about gaseous exchange so in the previous class we discussed that by the inhalation process from the nostrils through the nasal cavity pharynx larynx trachea and from bronchi bronchioles and finally it reaches the alveoli so when it reaches the alveoli so now by seeing this uh, figure you can understand these alveoli are surrounded by blood capillaries so by the diffusion process by diffusion process the carbon dioxide in the blood capillary is diffused into the alveoli and the oxygen in the alveoli diffused into the blood vessels in such a manner both the carbon dioxide and oxygen were exchanged so alveoli play very important role in the exchange of gaseous so in that means in such a manner oxygen is finally enter into the capillaries so from the capillaries now this gas is transported by the blood vessels so for, uh, after that diffusion process now the oxygen was diffused into the capillaries now in the capillaries actually we know that blood consists three types of blood cells red, uh, red blood cells white blood cells and blood platelets in this rbc play very important role red blood cells play very important role in the red blood cells 
hemoglobin is present. We all know that blood is red in color due to the presence of very important protein called as hemoglobin. And this hemoglobin now play very important role. As soon as oxygen enters into the capillaries, immediately this Hb, hemoglobin combining with oxygen and form as a oxyhemoglobin at the lungs. So now this oxygen in the form of oxyhemoglobin carried to all parts of the body along with the blood vessels. So now it reaches each and every tissue in the tissues it, it goes into the every cells. So once it reaches the tissues or cells again this HbO2 again divided into hemoglobin plus oxygen and now in this way oxygen enters into the cells. So now this oxygen is useful for the further process of the cellular respiration. So before going to the just you can see when we inhale the air uh, basically we will take carbon dioxide, oxygen and nitrogen. See once when we exhale the air see oxygen percentage actually when while we are inhaled it is 21 percent but while we are exhaled it is 16 percent. In the same manner carbon dioxide in the inhaled air it is just 0 0.03 percent but see exhaled air 4.4 .4. in the sense you can understand how the carbon dioxide added. Uh, in the during the process of exhalation but whereas nitrogen how much we inhale the same percentage of the gas will exhale so hemoglobin play a very important role as it has act as a carrier for both oxygen and carbon dioxide so uh, when we talk about like mountaineers or deep sea divers uh, maybe you notice that they used to carry oxygen cylinders while they are going into the uh, trekking or while they are going into the deep of the sea because in in very high altitude and even in the deep sea also the oxygen availability is very less so in such case so they can't able to take the proper oxygen so then they can't able to get the energy so because of that reason mountaineers deep sea divers will carry the oxygen uh, cylinders along with them so now we move on to the next concept cellular respiration once the oxygen is reaches the cells now it undergoes further proce process during the cellular respiration. So as this respiration occurs inside the cells, that's what this respiration also called as cellular respiration or tissue respiration. So in this, in this process, now oxygen reaches the tissues. From the tissues, oxygen enters into cells. So inside the cells, as we know, mitochondria play very important role. Mitochondria are useful to produce the energy by the further process. Because of that, mitochondria are called as powerhouses of the cell. So, uh, before going to the concept, first we will discuss about the structure of the mitochondria. Mitochondria have two chambers. The, uh, this is called outer chamber and inside one is called inner chamber. So, and in, in, in the inner chamber, it have two membranes and inside the inner chamber it have folded structure these folds are called as cristae so this is called outer chamber and this is called inner chamber okay and this this is outer membrane this is called outer membrane and inside this membrane is called as inner membrane this inner membrane have many folds like this so these folds are called as cristae and these cristae actually inside the cristae there are small structures are present they are like small tubular and which are end with a fine head like structure so these particles actually called as elementary particles elementary particles these elementary particles actually play very important role during the production of energy so as the mitochondria are useful to produce energy, mitochondria are called as the powerhouses of the cell. Powerhouses of the cell.
and most of the eukaryotic animals i mean the animals which have proper nucleus are called as the eukaryotic animals all the eukaryotic animals cellular respiration occurs in cytoplasm and the mitochondria whereas when you talk about prokaryotic animals like bacteria the cellular respiration occurs only in the cytoplasm so the site of the cellular respiration is cytoplasm and mitochondria so now we'll go in detail about what is cellular respiration what is the process of it so during cellular respiration actually we need glucose and oxygen so we'll get glucose by taking food after digestion food reaches all the cells along with the uh, blood circulatory system in the same manner now oxygen also will reach reach and every cell by the uh, lungs in the now every cell receives oxygen as well as glucose these two are very very essential for the cellular respiration so once glucose enters into the in the cells so now in presence of oxygen it undergoes cellular respiration even in absence of oxygen also it undergoes respiration so now based on the presence or absence of oxygen we can divide the respiration into two types okay Th those two are one is aerobic respiration and another one is anaerobic respiration aerobic respiration means the respiration which occur in presence of oxygen the respiration which occurs in presence of oxygen is called as aerobic respiration whereas anaerobic means which occur in absence of oxygen so when you talk about the first step either aerobic or anaerobic first glucose divides into two pyruvic acids two pyruvic acids this step actually called as glycolysis this is the first step in respiration this step is called as glycolysis glyco means glucose lysis means breakdown so now glucose breakdown into two pyruvic acids it is the common step for both aerobic and anaerobic respiration so after formation of pyruvic acid suppose if oxygen is available then aerobic respiration will take place so in presence of oxygen now furtherly the pyruvic acid converts into co2 and h2o and energy this is the aerobic respiration but after formation of pyruvic acid if there is no availability of oxygen now in anaerobic respiration pyruvic acid furtherly divides into either lactic acid or ethanol and co2 plus energy so either aerobic respiration or anaerobic re respiration definitely some energy is going to produce but the difference is in aerobic respiration more energy is released whereas in anaerobic respiration very less amount of energy is released so in this anaerobic respiration generally you, we we know about lactic acid lactic acid means everyone knows about curd how the curd is prepared by by the addition of lactic acid bacillus to the milk milk turn into curd so here also generally which respiration will take place now anaerobic respiration due to the anaerobic respiration lactic acid formed in the curd in the same manner when you talk about ethanol uh, we all know this step it production of ethanol is also called as fermentation fermentation also a type of anaerobic respiration which is used to release ethanol and carbon dioxide so this fermentation generally used in the production of alcohol so all the type of alcohols are produced by the fermentation process not only uh, alcohols even in the home uh, dosa batter idli batter are also formed by the fermentation process 
so when when we prepare dosa batter or idli batter uh, the next day morning if you see it reaches the uh, uh, top of the vessel because of by releasing of carbon dioxide and it have one kind of smell because of the ethanol so idli and dosa batter also example for the fermented products so generally in our body also maximum all the parts of the body all tissues and cells 99 percent they'll give priority to produce the energy by aerobic process because by the aerobic process we will get more energy than the anaerobic process but our muscles our muscles are capable to produce energy by aerobically and anaerobically also so for this a small uh, example we need to share so while, while we are running we need more energy uh, by uh, doing sternus exercise also we require more energy so by that time we know that uh, after com completion of a uh, running race and all we used to feel very tired because initially muscles produce energy by aerobic respiration so so much energy produced once the oxygen levels are reduced because we can't take more breath by that time so oxygen levels are reduces then the muscles undergo the process of anaerobic respiration and produces energy to support us but by that time lactic acid is formed as an end product so because of the lactic acid we used to feel very tired it gives a, a fatigue nature to us so that is the reason just you remember while we are running while we are doing any sadness exercise due to the accumulation of lactic acid we used to feel so much tired and uh, fatigue uh, because of the lactic acid so once we are again when we take relaxation for some time again the whole process will be normal and again slowly we can able to get rid of from that tiredness so you have to understand our body especially muscles can able to produce energy by both aerobically and anaerobically so either aerobic or anaerobic in both the process carbon dioxide is released so now here uh, to know carbon dioxide release during anaerobic respiration there is a small experiment just see this experiment you will get an idea how carbon dioxide release during anaerobic respiration so uh, we here we need a small glass jar and another test tube so both are connected with the tubes and we required a thermometer in the first flask we need to add glucose solution and we need a liquid paraffin also before going to that first when we collect the glucose solution first we need to remove oxygen from that how can we remove oxygen from that a simple technique just by heating it and by cooling it we can remove the oxygen from this glucose solution again maybe we have a doubt whether it is uh, oxygen is present or not in it to know that simply we can add Janus green bee solution it slightly turn into pink color which indicate that oxygen is very less in this or oxygen is absent in the solution so once we confirm that then pour a, a layer of liquid paraffin over it so this is useful to cut off the air so to mix with the glucose so in another test we will take lime water and leave the whole apparatus for some time like that after some time we can observe that the lime water turns into milky white so by this we can prove that carbon dioxide release during the anaerobic respiration i hope you understood my concept so try to answer my questions now so how the lungs are protected which membrane protects the lungs and how gases exchange takes place at the alveoli and what is cellular respiration uh, which will act as a carrier for both oxygen and carbon dioxide and how can we prove that carbon dioxide release during anaerobic respiration so i hope you all answered my questions so in the next concept we'll discuss about respiration versus combustion and respiration in plants keep watching thank you